Shall we begin? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, it's February 18, 2021. It's a Thursday after Ash Wednesday. So we just began Lent. We are very much in the beginning of Lent. And the gospel today we're going to comment on comes from St. Luke, chapter 9, verses 22 to 25. So let's read it. It's a short gospel. Jesus said to his disciples, The Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to all, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit himself. <clears throat> so Lent reminds us of the mission of Jesus Christ, right? why he took on human nature and why he became man like every one of us except for sin. He came to earth to redeem us from sin and to restore to us his creatures, the dignity that belonged to us prior to sin, prior to original sin. Jesus came to restore to us the dignity of being children of God. He opened up the gates of heaven to give us a way, a path back to God through the forgiveness of our own sins and our own redemption from sin. And he did this by suffering, by dying on the cross, to ransom us from the devil with his own blood, okay? and his own death, and his own crucifixion. And he uh, uh, prophesied that three days after his own death, he was going to rise in triumph as a, a proof to all of us that he has conquered death and sin. Okay? Death, which are the consequences of sin. Corruption, which is the consequence of sin. He has restored us. He has redeemed us and given us back that dignity of being children of God. And gave us a pathway, a pathway to heaven. Now, to us, who profess that we follow Jesus Christ because we have, by virtue of his death on the cross, the spilling out of water and blood from his side gave birth to the church, the church which is the mystical body of Christ to which all of us belong, to which all of us have been baptized into. Okay, And we, faithful we who form this church in the body of Christ and profess that we are part of that body and we, we are organically part of that body, we call ourselves followers, disciples of Jesus Christ. Okay? Because we have become one with him. We are part of that body of which he is the head. We are part of one organic, living, mystical body of Christ in the church. And what does Jesus say of us then? If we are, he says, if you are uh, to be my followers, 
If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Now that can be a puzzle for many. What, what does that mean exactly? To be taking up one's cross daily if you are a follower of Jesus. If you say you're following Jesus. Why do we have to take up a cross and what is that cross? What's the meaning of that cross for us? Right? You might ask, what is the portion of that cross? If at all, I have to carry anything. What is that portion of that cross? I thought, as our Protestant brothers would say, well, you know, Jesus Christ died once and for all of us. And that was it. You know, uh, the cross is over. Eh? That's it. It's a done deal. We're all saved and we're all going to heaven. Yay! <laughs> Well, what sadly, uh, many of our Protestant brothers do not understand is that, yes, while Christ died on the cross and saved all of us and redeemed us from sin, we still have the burden of maintaining our good standing before God. We now have the responsibility to keep ourselves in good standing before God. We don't all of a sudden magically acquire immunity from sin. <laughs> okay? We don't all of a sudden uh, acquire a, a protective shield as though sin is never going to touch us again. That is not the reality. That's not the truth. Okay? Because we now have the burden of maintaining our good standing as members of that body of Christ. Okay? And that burden is the cross. That burden is actually the cross that we need to carry every day. That's why our Lord said, it's a daily task. You have to carry your cross daily and follow me. Okay? Every day we have to assert our belongingness to that body of Christ, our partaking of the mission of the body of Christ. And what is that mission? Again, the mission is the redemption of mankind, the salvation of mankind. Right? And that work, the maintenance part of that work continues every day, every day, every day of our lives. Right? It does not stop. And that is part of the burden of the cross that we personally need to carry every day. Okay? There are basically two forms by which this cross we bear daily is to be born. Number one, we have the burden, see, burden, cross. We have the burden of Making the fruits of the cross manifest in our lives. Okay? In other words, we have to make that the fruits of the cross really be incarnated in our own lives. Okay? And that requires, that is a burden we need to carry every day. That is in itself a cross. Okay? Um, and that is not a, an easy job. The job now that we have of manifesting the fruits of the cross is not anymore uh, freeing us from sin in a big way that Jesus did, but rather in maintaining ourselves in good standing, number one. And number two, furthering that good standing, making it bear fruit more, fruits of virtue, fruits of sanctity. Okay? That is why our task now after the cross is to continue that burden of making ourselves saints, of conforming ourselves into the image of Jesus Christ more and more. Okay? Now that's the first burden. The second burden is, well, we now have to partake in 
the apostolic mission of the church and now be the lighted lamp that does not get hidden under the bushel or the bed or the table, but it shines for everybody else to see the life of virtue we are living. We are now, we now have the burden to give good example to others, beginning from our own siblings here at home and then to the greater community outside of the home. We now have to try to bring people close to God. We, have, we now have the burden of showing the cross to others and educating others about the meaning of the cross and the meaning of uh, 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 our faith. We now have the burden of influencing others okay? so that through us, people can get to know Jesus Christ and get to know his redemptive work in our souls and potentially in theirs too see those are the two big crosses that we now carry on our shoulders if we are to be truly followers and disciples of jesus christ okay now but concretely how does that happen concretely how do we carry those crosses. What do those crosses look like on a daily basis? Because our Lord said here, right? You have to take up your cross daily and follow me. Well, guess what? That cross that we have to carry daily does not have to take the form of that big wooden beam that our Lord bore on his shoulders anymore. Okay? No, that's not the form anymore that we are going uh, uh, the the God allows us to participate in. It's not, I'm not a physical crucifixion anymore, the same way that he uh, underwent. But rather, rather, our crosses now, oh, what is Ava yelling about? Our crosses now come in the form of, our crosses now come in the form of, of many little discomforts that we experience every day, the annoyances that we we experience uh, from people, the the irritations that come from various sources around us, uh, from uh, from uh, people or events, right? The sickness that we sometimes have to bear, physical sickness that sometimes we have to bear, or uh, emotional stress, or uh, psychological difficulties, or the pains, physical pains of all sorts, or emotional pains, or, or any other kind of pain that we might define as pain. Our broken relationships okay, that need healing, uh, those are difficult things to bear. The unjust and unfair treatment that we we sometimes get from other people. Okay? Like nowadays, we Catholics, Christians in general, are under terrible persecution from all sides. Okay? And that is painful to bear, that is painful to witness, that is painful even to struggle against. The calumny, the slander, right? That we hear and we bear. Uh, with difficulty, the shame, the embarrassment that sometimes we we have to uh, we have to bear because of our own fault or because of our own limitations, right? Plenty. There, are, there are many, 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 many little things like these that happen every day of our lives. Well, my children, these are the crosses that we bear that we need to bear. These are the little crosses that our Lord has allowed us and is allowing us to, to, to share because this is our means of sharing in the big cross of Jesus Christ, in the big mission of redemption and sanctification of souls. So I would encourage you, every one of us, I would encourage everybody, 
to look at these daily challenges, these daily difficulties, these daily annoyances, these daily troubles that cause us emotional, psychological, physical pain and discomfort. These are the crosses of every day that our Lord is encouraging us to bear. But what do we do with them? What do we do with these crosses? What do we do with all of these troubles, these comforts and pains? Well, number one, we bear them with a smile. We bear them with a smile because we, we know that we are carrying these things, participating in that great mission of our Lord. We are happy to bear these things for the sake of achieving the mission of Jesus Christ that we partake in, the redemption and sanctification of souls. So we bear them with a smile on our faces, not with long, long pouting faces. We do not, we're not complaining about it. We bear them cheerfully, courageously, because we know that we are taking part of the great mission of Jesus Christ. Okay? Second, Second thing that we will do with these crosses is to offer them up. You hear that oftentimes in, in our own home, offer it up, offer up. The offer up, what, what does that mean? What do you mean when you say offer it up? It means that you use these little crosses as a means of prayer. You're actually using them to pray for, for what? for your needs, for your own spiritual needs, for the needs of other people, even for the healing of the sick, okay? even for the emotional healing of others, we can use them to pray for the needs of other people. Okay? So physical mortification, the bearing of these crosses of Jesus okay, are an avenue for prayer. Uh, they are an avenue to draw down graces from Jesus Christ that he now apportions to those who need them most. Okay? That is the way that we use our little crosses of every day in order to take part in the big mission of Jesus Christ. So let's keep this in mind during this Lent. Let us learn to take our burdens on our shoulders. Okay? Let us learn to offer up the sacrifices, the crosses, the little difficulties that God allows us to, to have as our way of participating in the big mission of Jesus Christ. And when we bear these things with a smile on our faces and with a willingness of a good cooperator in the mission of Jesus Christ let us remember what he what our lord promised right my yoke is easy my burden is light okay because i'll carry it with you okay he'll carry it with us and it will bear fruits of sanctity for each and every one of us okay that's it for us, folks. Where is my co-host, Ava? Uh-oh. <laughs> Thumb sucking, Ava. Are you going to say goodbye, Ava? No, not now. Okay, she's not in the mood. Okay, well, have a good day, everybody. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye.